Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, and if <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And thank you to those who have subscribed so far. It really, really means a lot and it's only going to get bigger. So if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe because I'll be uploading new videos every week on various different topics. And if you have any suggestions on videos that you would like to see, please do comment down below. Uh, this week's episode is going to be on a GBB enclosure rehousing. So I'm going to be taking it from an enclosure that I bought with the, the, with the tarantula and rehousing it into a new one. Now the old enclosure was just fine. It, it's kind of dirty and you, you'll see what I'm talking about, but I wanted to put it into a fresh new one. And the one that's in now will be the temporary one because I, I, think, I think it needs to be a little bit bigger, but for now it's just fine. And uh, so, here we go. Okay, first up as always, we're gonna add some substrate. The enclosure I currently have only allows me to put three to four uh, inches of substrate in. I'm using pure coconut fiber at this point and I will be adding a different kind of substrate later on on top. Here I'm just eyeballing the cork bark and I wanna uh, make sure that the tarantula has enough room up top to be able to walk around. Uh, and I'm gonna cut it at a 45 degree angle so that way I can slide in the bottom of the cork bark into the substrate. And that allows the tarantula to be able to hide and crawl in and actually burrow into the substrate below it if it chooses to. Okay, the next step is to take everything that you want in your enclosure, place it inside to make sure it all fits correctly. The last thing you want is to get everything made and then it doesn't fit. So just make sure you double check. Okay, this next part is my personal favorite, making the enclosure unique. And since a lot of tarantulas are hiding in their dens most of their lives, it's very important to make their enclosure look like a piece of art. And the way I found that makes the enclosure stand out is instead of just throwing fake plants or fake leaves in the corners, take some vines and hot glue them to a piece of cork bark. Adding leaves and moss is another great idea. Spraying the moss can provide humidity and moisture to your enclosure. Wrap them around your piece to make it look like the plants are alive and thriving. Spend some time on this and I guarantee you, you'll be way more satisfied. Plus it's a really cool way to impress your friends and family. And I would just be creative with it and try to come up with something new and inspiring, something that other people haven't seen before. Next, I'm adding some Zoomed creature soil on top. It has some moisture in the substrate, which makes it heavier, and I'm using that to build up more support around the cork bark to hold it in place. The last step is to add some broken cork bark, more plants, and leaves as a final touch. So there you have it. That's how you build a semi-terrestrial slash arboreal enclosure. Uh, it's not so much arboreal, and that's why I wanna be upgrading it later to give it a little bit more height. But I'm hoping that you take away from this video on how to take sticks and fake plants, glue them together, make them look nice, and uh, go from there. And then just use your creativity and build your own custom enclosure. So again, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe. And if you haven't checked out my Instagram yet, it's at spiderguyinfo. And again, that's on Instagram. And I really, really appreciate you. And uh, I hope you have a good day.